The tale of Steve Jobs' early days is as intricate as it is captivating. Born into the world in 1955, he emerged into a family woven from a tapestry of diverse cultures and fervent passions. But fate had different intentions. Clara and Paul Jobs made the difficult decision to welcome their newborn baby into their home. Paul, a virtuoso in auto mechanics, and Clara, a savvy accountant, became his newfound guardians, pledging to carve out a brighter path for his future. From the outset, Steve's soul was steeped in the marvels of technology, thanks to his father's deft hands, which crafted miracles from the inner workings of automobiles within the confines of their garage. Together, they dismantled radios and televisions, kindling a flame of fascination for all things mechanical within young Steve's heart. Yet the corridors of academia proved to be a battleground for Steve. Amidst the hallways of learning, he found himself thrust into the limelight as a mischievous troublemaker. However, amidst the chaos, a beacon of hope emerged in the form of Mrs. Hill, a teacher who discerned the latent brilliance within him and strove to nurture it to fruition. But the trials of youth were not solely confined to the classroom. Steve found himself ensnared in the treacherous streets of a crime-ridden neighborhood where the shadows lurked with threats of peril. In a bid to secure safety, his family made the painful sacrifice of parting with their possessions, seeking refuge in the sanctuary of a safer enclave. In this new sanctuary, Steve's journey of discovery continued unabated. His father's employment with a burgeoning company opened doors to a realm teeming with opportunities in the realm of technology, propelling young Steve into a realm of endless possibilities. Steve Jobs' journey into the world of technology was ignited by a chance encounter with his neighbor, the engineer Larry Lang, who introduced him to the captivating realm of the Hewlett Packard Science Club. It was within the confines of this club that Steve laid eyes on the mesmerizing HP 9900A personal computer, igniting a spark that would shape his future endeavors. Fueled by his newfound fascination, he embarked on his own venture, crafting a digital frequency meter. With the benevolent assistance of Bill Hewlett, the estimate heat of the company, Steve procured the essential components necessary for his project. Alongside his comrade Stefan Wozniak, he delved into the world of entrepreneurship by founding a blue box business, a lucrative endeavor that paved the way for their success. Despite the demands of his burgeoning career, Steve found time to work at HP and Moonlight as a newspaper delivery boy during his formative years at Homestead High. By the tender age of 15, he prudently owned his very first care, a vibrant two-tone Nash Metropolitan. A year later, armed with ambition and savings, he upgraded to a sleek red Fiat 850 Coupe. In the summer of 1972, Steve followed his heart, defying parental objections, and retreated to a rustic cabin nestled in the mountains above Los Altos with his beloved girlfriend, Chris Ann Brennan. Meanwhile, his academic pursuits led him to Reed College in Portland, where he delved into Eastern spiritual practices and adopted a vegetarian lifestyle. It was at Reed where he forged lifelong friendships with kindred spirits like Daniel Kotke and Robert Friedland. Venturing further into the realms of technology, Steve joined Atari in 1974, immersing himself in the role of a technician. His quest for self-discovery led him to India and the exploration of psychedelics, before returning to Atari to develop the iconic game Breakout. However, his passion for innovation soon led him to part ways with the company. In September 1976, Steve found himself amongst a group of visionaries in Menlo Park, where he embarked on the ambitious endeavor of creating the Apple Huarbar computer alongside Wozniak. Apple Computer The genesis of Apple Computer unfolds like a captivating tale of innovation and daring entrepreneurship. In the crisp January air of 1976, two visionaries, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, 
embarked on a journey to bring their revolutionary ideas to life. Fueled by ambition, they made a bold decision to raise capital by parting ways with their cherished possessions. Jobs bid farewell to his beloved Volkswagen T1, while Wozniak reluctantly relinquished his prized HP 65 calculator. With funds in hand, Jobs wasted no time in procuring a circuit board schematic from a contact at Atari, setting the stage for their groundbreaking endeavor. Sensing the need for guidance and legal expertise, they enlisted the sage counsel of Ron Wayne, a wise third partner tasked with mediating disputes and navigating legal intricacies. As they charted their course forward, inspiration struck in the form of a name, Apple Computer. Conceived by Jobs upon his return from Oregon, the name encapsulated their vision of simplicity, elegance, and innovation. On April 1, 1976, amidst a whirlwind of anticipation and excitement, Apple Computer was officially incorporated. However, the journey took an unexpected turn just 12 days later when Wayne bid adieu to the fledgling company, exchanging his stake for a modest sum of $800 and an additional $1,500 in exchange for relinquishing any future claims. Thus, the stage was set for Apple Computer to embark on its transformative journey, guided by the unyielding spirit of innovation and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Apple Law In the vibrant atmosphere of a gathering at the Homemade Computer Club, Jobs and Wozniak unveiled their creation to the eager audience. With Jobs' characteristic enthusiasm, he passionately showcased their computer, hoping to captivate potential buyers. Yet among the curious onlookers, only one person, Paul Terrell, the proprietor of the Byte store in Menlo Park, saw the potential in their invention. In a bold move, Jobs struck a deal with Terrell for the purchase of 50 Apple, e-computers at $500 each, despite lacking the necessary funds. With sheer determination and the support of friends, Jobs managed to secure loans and borrow components, all under Terrell's assurance. Pooling together their resources, Jobs and Wozniak rallied their friends, including Daniel Kotke and his sister Patty, to assist in the assembly process. Despite facing a shortage of spare parts, they worked tirelessly to fulfill the order, earning a dollar for each computer assembled. Against the odds, they managed to deliver the order to Terrell on time, even though some computers were not entirely complete. Though the Apple E fell short of Terrell's initial expectations, Jobs' persuasive skills and the allure of their invention won him over. Through strategic negotiation and cost-cutting measures on components, Jobs turned the tables, ensuring profitability and securing the payment for the order. With hundreds more Apple Y computers sold thereafter, they began to establish the image of a formidable and thriving enterprise. Apple II, Stephen Wozniak, reflecting on the genesis of the Apple Suivine, asserts that it was essentially a modified terminal for the ARPANET, offering little innovation apart from its utilization of dynamic memory. However, the subsequent creation of the Apple C II in 1976 marked a significant leap forward, boasting a host of groundbreaking features. Recognizing insights gleaned from the sales of the Apple Y, Jobs envisioned a consumer-friendly product and found himself at odds with Wozniak regarding the number of expansion slots in the Apple II. As Jobs increasingly prioritized design aesthetics, he enlisted consultant Jerry Manock to craft the device's sleek exterior. In 1977, the Apple II made its debut, showcasing an integrated keyboard, vivid color graphics, immersive sound, a sleek plastic casing, eight expansion slots, and dual floppy drives. Apple III. The Apple III project marked Apple's initial foray into creating a computer tailored for the corporate world, prioritizing robust marketing strategies. Commencing in late 1978 under the stewardship of Dr. Wendell Sander 
as Stephen Wozniak devoted his energies to refining the Apple II. Steve Jobs spearheaded the endeavor. Diverging significantly from its predecessor, the Apple III debuted as a dedicated business-centric model. However, the launch revealed glaring flaws. Apple III units suffered from instability, frequently succumbing to overheating and subpar components. Moreover, the scant availability of software compounded users' frustrations, with limited options even in Apple Tech U compatibility mode. Despite efforts to rectify these issues, the computer's unreliability tarnished its reputation, leading to its discontinuation in 1983. This setback served as a pivotal lesson for Apple, underscoring the imperative of rigorous product development, robust testing, and keen responsiveness to user demands. Apple Lisa, under Steve Jobs' stewardship, the Apple Lisa initiative embarked on a mission to craft a revolutionary computer boasting 16-bit architecture, all priced at an enticing $2,000. Dubbed after his daughter Lisa, the project inadvertently thrust Jobs' personal life into the limelight, despite his reluctance to acknowledge the connection. While Lisa boasted superior design and enhanced capabilities over the Apple T2, it lacked groundbreaking innovations, save for applications engineered by the brilliant Bill Atkinson. Disappointed by the absence of a game-changing element, Jobs sought a breakthrough, prompting suggestions from Jeff Raskin and Bill Atkinson to explore fresh avenues, leading them to Xerox Park. A pivotal encounter ensued at Xerox Park, exposing Apple to avant-garde advancements in user interfaces, graphic design, and the iconic mouse. Enthusiastically embracing these concepts, Jobs seamlessly incorporated them into the Lisa project, even poaching talented engineers from Xerox to bolster Apple's ranks. Yet, internal strife and Jobs' combative demeanor precipitated his ousting from the Lisa project, relegating him to a ceremonial role as chairman of Apple's board of directors, devoid of substantive authority. Thus, Jobs found himself estranged from the very initiative he had ignited, Macintosh. The Macintosh project stands as a pivotal chapter in Apple's saga, particularly with Steve Jobs' triumphant return to the helm in early 1981. Taking the reins of the initiative, Jobs orchestrated significant changes, resulting in Jeff Raskin's departure from the company. Undeterred, Raskin ventured into the realm of computing, birthing the Canon Cat, albeit to lukewarm reception in the market. Under Jobs' visionary guidance, the Macintosh transcended mere functionality, becoming a canvas for his pursuit of artistic excellence. Obsessed with perfection, he scrutinized every detail, imposing stringent standards on its form and function to achieve a seamless harmony. Yet Jobs' insistence on a closed system, isolating the Macintosh from compatibility with other Apple products like the Lisa, sparked internal discord, fracturing the team and souring the company's atmosphere. In a bid for unity, Jobs enlisted the acclaimed designer Hartmut Esslinger to forge a cohesive design language for Apple's lineup. The collaboration birthed the iconic Snow White aesthetic, setting a new standard that reverberated throughout the global computer and office equipment markets. Jobs harbored aspirations of orchestrating a boardroom coup, but his schemes were uncovered, leading to his ousting from Apple in 1985. Undeterred, he forged ahead and founded Next Inky, aiming to craft robust and groundbreaking computers tailored for scientific and educational endeavors. The genesis of the Big Mac project at Next Inc. paved the way for the inception of Next Computers. Despite encountering hurdles and financial woes, Next birth ed computers that stood ahead of their time, lauded for their sleek and innovative design. Yet the lofty price tag of Next Computers coupled with limited availability hampered their widespread adoption. Next pivoted towards software development and its technological prowess later found its place in Apple's ecosystem. In a pivotal turn of events in 1997, 
Apple acquired Next, marking Jobs' return to the helm. Next-T's technological prowess became the cornerstone of Apple's future innovations, shaping the trajectory of Mac OS and other pivotal products. This strategic acquisition proved instrumental in Apple's resurgence under Jobs' visionary leadership. Jobs played a pivotal role in the evolution of Pixar, a venture he heavily invested in and steered towards success. Originally conceived as a hub for computer graphics and animation, Pixar transitioned into the realm of animated filmmaking following the monumental triumph of Toy Story. This collaboration with Disney Studios marked a watershed moment, propelling Pixar to the forefront of the animation landscape. Securing a long-term partnership deal with Disney proved to be a masterstroke in Pixar's trajectory. This alliance facilitated the creation of a string of blockbuster hits, including Finding Nemo, WALL-E, Monsters, Inc., and a myriad of others. Under Jobs' astute stewardship and financial backing, Pixar ascended as the premier studio for animated masterpieces. In a landmark move in 2006, Disney acquired Pixar for a staggering $7.4 billion, significantly enriching Jobs and earning him a coveted seat on Disney's board of directors. A return to Apple. In the mid-1990s, as Jobs assumed the mantle of family breadwinner, his brainchild, Next Software Inc., encountered financial woes. Concurrently, Apple faced its own struggles post-Jobs' departure, grappling with dwindling market share. The notion of a Next merger with or acquisition by Apple first surfaced in 1994 during a tete tete between Jobs and Apple luminary Gil Emilio. However, it wasn't until late 1996, with Apple in dire straits, that Emilio revisited Jobs' proposition. Apple swooped in to acquire Next for a hefty $427 million, ushering in a transfer of Next's tech arsenal, notably the Next Step operating system, into the Apple fold, ultimately serving as the foundation for Mac OS X. On December 20, 1996, Jobs made a triumphant return to Apple, donning the mantle of advisor to the chairman. Swiftly springing into action, he orchestrated a restructuring of personnel and charted fresh pathways for the company's growth. Despite his self-proclaimed consultant status and aversion to power plays, his sway within the company proved substantial. Think different. The Think Different campaign, spearheaded by Steve Jobs, marked a pivotal juncture in Apple's narrative, transcending mere advertising to embody a profound ethos. It served as a resounding declaration that Apple's mission extended beyond crafting gadgets. It championed and emboldened those driven to reshape and revolutionize. Guided by Jobs' visionary leadership, Apple underwent a renaissance of innovation and design, birthing groundbreaking products like the Power Macintosh, G3, and iMac. Strategic pruning of product lines and initiatives paved the way for a laser focus on crafting top-tier avant-garde offerings. This unwavering commitment to excellence not only propelled Apple's resurgence, but also set industry benchmarks, positioning it as the vanguard of innovation, design, and unparalleled user experience. In doing so, the Think Different campaign not only fortified Apple's market standing, but also cultivated a legion of devotees and brand advocates who resonate with its distinctive values and worldview. iMac G3. The iMac G3 stands as a landmark achievement in Apple's storied legacy, seamlessly blending daring design, cutting edge technology, and intuitive functionality. Its impact reverberated far beyond mere aesthetics, captivating a diverse spectrum of users with its groundbreaking approach. Crafted under the meticulous eye of Jonathan Ive and his team, the iMac G3 boasted an iconic design that captivated and enchanted. Its translucent casing not only exuded allure, but also offered a window into the inner workings of the machine fostering a deeper connection between users and their technology. 
This departure from the norm, where components were shrouded in opaque enclosures, lent an air of intimacy to the computing experience. The resounding triumph of the iMac G3 underscored the paramount importance of design alongside functionality in the tech landscape. It heralded a new era for Apple under the stewardship of Steve Jobs, signifying a renaissance of innovation and setting the stage for the company's ongoing evolution and advancement. The Apple Store emerged as a paradigm-shifting retail concept that redefined the conventional notion of a computer hardware store. Led by Jobs and his team, it transcended mere product sales to offer a holistic, consumer-centric experience. Through meticulously curated store interiors, knowledgeable staff, and a distinct ambiance, it fostered a profound connection between the brand and its clientele. Meanwhile, iTunes blazed a trail in the realm of digital music and content distribution. What began as a modest media player evolved into a comprehensive platform facilitating the purchase, storage, and playback of music, movies, podcasts, and more. Integral to Apple's ecosystem, iTunes seamlessly synchronizes diverse devices while granting users seamless access to a vast array of multimedia content. These groundbreaking initiatives underscored Apple's prowess in marketing and innovation under Jobs' stewardship, epitomizing his unwavering dedication to crafting products that not only cater to user needs, but also redefine the parameters of their respective industries. The launch of the iTunes Store on April 28, 2003, marked a groundbreaking leap in the realm of music and digital content. It revolutionized the way people accessed and enjoyed music by pioneering the concept of purchasing individual songs rather than entire albums. This novel approach empowered users to cherry-pick their favorite tracks, offering a distinct advantage over traditional album purchases. Initially met with skepticism from record companies and artists, the idea of selling songs for 99 cents each raised eyebrows. Yet, Steve Jobs remained steadfast in his belief that it would combat piracy by providing a legal avenue for music consumption. To further his vision, he initially restricted access to the iTunes Store to Mac users, a niche segment of the personal computer market. However, the store's success defied expectations. In a mere six days, the iTunes Store witnessed the sale of a staggering one million songs, signaling the outset of its triumphant journey. It was hailed as a pivotal moment in the music industry, reshaping the landscape of digital music distribution. Over time, the iTunes Store expanded its repertoire to include movies, TV shows, audiobooks, and a myriad of other media content. iPhone. The iPhone stands as one of the most groundbreaking products to emerge under Steve Jobs' leadership. While the iPod's success brought a sense of achievement, Jobs foresaw the future unfolding in the realm of cell phones. Apple needed to carve out its own space in the mobile device market. However, an initial attempt to create a hybrid of the iPod and a phone with Motorola faltered. Undeterred, Jobs pivoted to retrofitting the iPod with phone capabilities. Concurrently, Apple's top minds were crafting an internet tablet with a revolutionary multi-touch interface. Yet, the focus shifted to phone development. The unparalleled multi-touch display was tailored to fit the phone screen, replacing the mechanical keyboard with a sleek software interface. Opting for durability and scratch resistance, Jobs opted for glass over plastic for the phone's screen. A groundbreaking agreement with Corning Glass saw the retooling of its factory for mass-producing glass. After meticulous refinement and tireless effort, the iPhone made its grand debut at the Macworld Expo in January 2007. Over five years, more than 250 million units of the iPhone series were sold, catapulting Apple to unprecedented revenue heights.
The iPhone's journey has been a story of continual innovation. From the sleek design and advanced features of the iPhone 4 in 2010 to the game-changing Touch ID introduced with the iPhone 5s in 2013, each model has left an indelible mark on the world of mobile technology. With the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus in 2014, Apple raised the bar yet again with larger screens and enhanced camera capabilities. Throughout its evolution, the iPhone has redefined what's possible in mobile devices, setting new standards for performance, design, and user experience. iPad When Steve Jobs unveiled the iPad in 2010, opinions were as varied as the colors of the rainbow. Some dismissed it as merely a larger iPod Touch, while others saw it merely as a content consumption tablet. Yet, despite the initial skepticism, the iPad emerged as one of Apple's most triumphant creations. Within its inaugural year, over 15 million units flew off the shelves, marking one of the most sensational launches in consumer electronics history. A standout feature of the iPad was its ability to run iPhone applications, later joined by specially optimized iPad apps. Additionally, it boasted the iBooks eBook Reader and the iBook Store, posing a challenge to Amazon's dominance. The second-generation iPad, unveiled in 2011, garnered similar accolades. Jobs, at the launch event, underscored its significance for creative endeavors, showcasing apps like iMovie and GarageBand. Alongside hardware enhancements, fresh features and accessories debuted, including a detachable magnetized case. However, the tides shifted with Steve Jobs' resignation in August 2011, after a prolonged battle with cancer. It marked the close of a legendary chapter. Jobs left an indelible mark on the realms of technology and design and his contributions to both Apple and the industry at large remain immeasurable. Steve Jobs embarked on his path to wealth at a remarkably young age, amassing a fortune of $256 million by the tender age of 25. Yet his journey to success was far from over. At the time of his passing, his accomplishments had soared to even greater heights. Jobs possessed a staggering 5.426 million shares of Apple stock valued at $2.1 billion. Additionally, he held 138 million shares of Disney stock, acquired through the sale of Pixar Studios, totaling a whopping $44.4 billion. Despite his monumental achievements as CEO of Apple, Jobs modestly accepted a nominal annual salary of just $1.00, quipping that he received an additional 50 cents for his work efficiency. In 2011, Forbes magazine estimated his net worth at a staggering $7 billion, securing his place among the 39 wealthiest Americans. Tragically, Steve Jobs departed this world around 3.00 p.m. on October 5, 2011, at his residence in California, succumbing to complications that ultimately led to respiratory arrest.